Hey everybody, welcome to Elisa's Art Room. Tonight we're going to be working some more on my The Apothecary Collector of Curiosities Junk Journal. Y'all come in and say hi. Y'all come in and say hi. Let me know you're here. Um, we are live on Facebook if you see the little red button at the top. If not, it's a replay. Get you guys pulled up so I can see chat. Hey Don, thank you for letting me know that sounds good. Alright, let's see if this thing co-ops right. It keeps saying trying to reconnect. I'm not sure why. Alright, anyway, so we're gonna work on this. We're gonna work on the pages. Um I got a few things I wanna play with and I gotta cover the backs and stuff like that. So we're gonna do that. We may get to some decorating. We may not. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So let's see. We got a couple people on here. Let's see who else is on here. Oops. I hate when you try to scroll your video. It if you push too far, it goes to the next video. It's like okay, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to refresh <laughs> so I can see it. Okay, I think it's good. All right, let me go ahead, pull the camera up top, and we'll get started on this, because you know me, it takes me forever. <laughs> All right, one second. Excuse all the bumping around. Oh, it's way out of focus. Focus. Oh, there it goes. Okay, the light seems okay. Volume is good. Angela. All right, so I've been playing around with printing stuff because because my journal is small this time, I'm having issues with printing. <laughs> I keep printing them too bad, big, and then I have to go back and print it again. And it's like it's it's pretty small. These pages are well compared to what I normally do. They're, they're not really small, but just compared because what did I say it was that's wrong side they're only like five and a quarter not even quite five and a quarter like five and an eighth so pretty narrow that that seems to be the biggest issue is getting the narrow to fit at least when I have a picture that's going to get chopped off that's so annoying I printed out some vellum stuff so I'll show you that first so I played around with my own photos and a couple of photos that I had gotten online in various places. So this is my thick vellum that I had ordered from Amazon. So I printed this picture. This is a picture from a house that I used to live at and it's a scene outdoors at night and the moon was really full and it was just kind of really kind of creepy looking. Um, these are, um, what are those? Are they eucalyptus trees? I think they're eucalyptus trees, but they got that bark that just like is falling off all over the place. And um, it was just real creepy looking. So I put that on that one. And then this is my crow painting that I did. Now it's not in black and white, my actual painting. It's been sold, but I turned it black and white and then I just kind of faded out the edges. So those are the two on this one and they're just on either side of this. And then I'll probably ink the edges of this. I tore the vellum out and then I'll ink it and stuff, but I got those in there. And then on this one, hey Deborah, on this one, so I found this image on, um, trying to remember. I don't remember the name of the site, but it was supposedly a public domain image, so I went ahead and got it. It looks like it's AI. I don't know what it is. Some creepy looking death thing. <laughs> I don't know what he is. I've All these, the opacity is very low because I wanted them to, to be kind of just moody. Um, they're much darker than this normally, 
but so I printed him out and then this is my magpie that I painted and same thing it's a lot lighter than normal and I'm debating if I want to put it on top of this paper or not originally I thought it kind of looked cool but I'm not sure my choice is that one or possibly this green wallpaper -y looking thing as it'll, it'll change the look of it depending on what I put it on if I put it on that I don't have those spider webs contending with it which might be better but it does give everything kind of a greenish tint not that it matters and then if I put it on just regular coffee dyed you know I get that kind of a look So there's lots of places I could put it. I haven't decided. <laughs> For sure. I thought the spider web, but I think the spider web's too distracting. So I'm gonna, we're going to put it here for now. And then if that doesn't work, I'll move it. Which is, you know, the nice thing about not doing it yet. You like the eerie green? All right. Well, we're going to stick it there for now. Let's see how that works out. And then the last one is this one. And this was a public domain image um, it was just like kind of like apothecary stuff this one's bitters and you know one of the cure-all crazy things that the weird stuff in it and then the other side just had um, refined Liverpool salt because you know you got to have salt with all your you know potions and stuff so so I did those two and I just put those on the coffee diet I think that's where they're gonna look best so right now they're there. But that's what I did while I, I was away. And then, so I printed out some more of these background scenes. And anyone who's watched my gothic grunge journal I did last year has seen these. Um, I think I want to do it again. I debated, but you know, I'm, I'm keeping that one for myself, so I'm going to just do it again because I know y'all liked it. It'll be a little different, I'm sure, because I don't have the same dolls and cutouts, paper, you know, paper dolls left that I did last time. Um, I don't know what I have left. I might have some of the same ones because I did buy another pack since then. So these are, I'm trying to find my cheat sheet here. It's here somewhere. I think it's this one. Let's see. This is called, what is it called? Gothic Victorian Living, Living Room. It is by Lumiere um, Luminor Art. L-U-M-I-N-O-I-R-A-R-T. So that's where these came from. It's a digital from Etsy. I have all of the links and things and I'll put that in the YouTube description when I post it you love the rooms I love the rooms too so I printed out a few I think they might be different rooms than I printed last time because I had a whole bunch of them I'm not sure I know that one's the same but I'm not sure I don't think I used that one last year I mean, I've got the journal over here I could pull it up and see but I tried to pick different ones if I could so I printed those and hopefully I've I've got like a black border around them so I can tear them out um, and hopefully I've got them small enough I think I do but I will do another I think I'm just going to do another center spread like that and that, so what I'm going to do is probably change out the coffee dyed I don't know it might be sturdy enough but I don't think it will be so I think I will change coffee dyed already backed this one so I backed this off camera this is just some scrapbook paper different scrapbook paper and a little piece of um, fabric because this was cracking really bad because it was against the grain and I was a little worried about it not staying together well so I just went ahead and reinforced it with a strip of fabric so that's that one's backed I just did some spider webs and stuff on this one. Maybe I'll just take out the coffee dyed and add another cardstock. 
I think it would be safer to do it on cardstock. So I'll probably take out this coffee dye because I don't know. Although I did print these on linen paper, so they are fairly thick. Let me see. By the time I glue it on here, you know, it might be fine. It might be fine. But I will have to grunge that up if I do because it's too light. It needs to be much darker. I don't even remember what I did last year, guys. I'll have to look and see, but I might can fit. I might can do it on that because I went ahead and printed these on my linen. Um, it's like a resume paper. It's a little heavier weight than my normal copy paper, and the color isn't enough to really change the overall look of this too much. I did print these out on draft um, because I'm low on ink, and they printed okay. They're they're not bad considering I printed them on draft. Before I put them in, I'm going to decide if I want to spray them lightly with um, my spray fixative stuff because it is a lot of ink on my inkjet. And there are lines, but I really don't care because it's just a background and I don't think it matters. By the time I put all the stuff in front, it doesn't matter. So... Let's just try it on the coffee bag. I think it'll be all right. The last time I did put it on cardstock. I don't know. I'll have to decide. So I've got three of those for each of the signatures to go in the middle. And we'll do that because that, that looks pretty cool. If anyone... Do I have anybody new here? I really don't know. I've had a couple of new people, but not a lot. Not a lot of live anyway. They might be watching the replays. Because it is on YouTube now, so I get more people watching replays. But this is last year's. I love this journal. That's why I couldn't sell it. <laughs> I loved it too much. Uh, that's not very good business, is it? But, so last year I did, I did these on this cardstock paper, which is that dark apothecary. So it is on cardstock, and then it looks like I just inked to the other side. I did sew around it all zigzaggy, so maybe I'll do that um, off camera before you all come back. So I do kind of like that sewn look, but I also like this torn edge. Maybe I need cardstock to get that torn edge like that because it's real sturdy. And holding all these paper dolls and stuff, I like it to be sturdy. Aren't they cool? They got little charms. I still have a whole box of these charms too, so I still got charms left. All right. I think I'll do cardstock. I just think it's going to be safer, especially by the time I sew it and all that. But I'll tear all the edges. I'm not going to do it in front of y'all because I have to get the sewing machine out. Well, I can tear the edges and get them ready, but I can't sew it. Well, I can, but that means dragging out the sewing machine. Y'all know how that goes. So let's pick some cardstock to use then instead of the coffee dyed. So we'll do that. Maybe something that'll blend into the edges better so I don't have to ink it quite so much. It depends if I put it on that side because if I don't, then the other side's white. So I might just put it on the white side and ink it, honestly. It's probably the smartest thing to do. So maybe I'll do that. All right, so I don't really need to do much to these. They're, they're not that fat, so realistically, if I have to add a page, it's not a big deal. At this point, if it gets to be a big deal, then I'll worry about it then. I printed out a few more line dot, line dot arrow. Did I write it down? I think these were line dot arrow. Isn't that what I said? I know I wrote it on one of them. Let me see if I can find the one I wrote on. There it is. Line dot arrow. Vintage book pages. So this is one of hers too. Just real cool. It's in the same set. So I've got that. I'm going to put it somewhere. I may just use it for a page to write on. I, I don't know, but they're so cool I had to use them. Because they're just super grungy and cool and, you know, yummy. I don't have hardly anything left in this book I used last year. I, I really cleaned it out. There's a little bit left. A lot of mostly just ephemera type stuff, which we'll use. 
and a lot of it is kind of real creepy so I think it'll fit well just a lot of creepy stuff so plenty of things for ephemera I got this off of Amazon I looked yesterday I feel like it was still available it's not cheap per se um, but considering what you get it's 200 pieces and gosh even this cover this is it if you could feel this I don't know what that is made out of but it feels so weird it's almost waxy it's like satiny wax <laughs> But you could even cut out pieces from here. You could cut this whole piece out. This is too big for my journal that I'm working on, but it is cool. You could almost make just a journal cover out of it, but cause that would be really cool as like a writing board or something, but it's, it's just too big for this one. But I like it. But anyway, this was, I want to say 15-ish on Amazon. Um, if you're interested in this type of a thing, it's all fussy cutting kind of things. Have you bought one? It's, it's really weird. I don't even know how to explain it. It just feels bizarre. It makes you want to touch it. <laughs> it's like, I'm real, I like textures anyway. Well, good textures. I don't like bad textures. <laughs> Uh, so you know what I'm talking about then. <laughs> Isn't that weird? So anyway, so let's prepare these and find backdrops. So that'll be the thing we'll do for now. Because I think other than that, my signatures are ready. I think they're looking pretty darn good. Um, I still don't know what I will end up using as my end. What do you call these? Um, I think they're called tip-in pages. This page that covers over that. I think it's called a tip-in. Um, not 100% sure, but. I'll have to pick something for there. I thought about possibly using this. I just, I'm not sure if it fits well enough. I mean, the colors do for sure. I could either, I could honestly use either one of these. I have one of these that actually didn't chop off the sides. I think it's this one. Like I said, I had to keep reprinting it. But even something like that for my tip end pages might look cool. So, and but that happens after my center's put in and it's glued here, and then I cover it, and then the ribbon and all that's put on there. Then, which hopefully I won't forget. I'm half tempted to glue my ribbon on now so I don't forget. <laughs> oh, there's nothing worse than forgetting. And then you have to figure out another closure or rip it apart and nobody wants to do that all right let's find some papers i need one of these though for size let me just grab out i'll just grab the coffee dyed one i just want to use it for size because it's just easier um i didn't do anything really in the black and white one at this point I am going to get the signature pages picked out. But picking out black and white pages is becoming its a bit of a challenge. I might have to print something or design something myself um, to put in there. Or I could just, you know, I thought about just inking up a bunch of stuff with gray, grays and blacks, which I might use that too. But that's going to take a little more prep time. So let's pick a cardstock. I've got all these things cardstock. Let's put that one over there. Let's see what's left. This is interesting. I don't know how I feel about the gold. I mean, I like it. I just don't know how it fits into the scheme of things. So obviously we don't want to mess up the potion one. I mean, I could do that, but then it's kind of, well, it would be on the other side though. Didn't I say that? Oh, I did say that. Maybe I need to know what's on the other page. <laughs> Maybe that's what I need to be doing. Let me think about that. All right. What's the other cardstock? These are not, are they? No, oh, they are cardstock. 
These are really cool too. I just got to decide if they're gothic enough. I know that is, but I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't guess it matters if I use it in both. I've got like three. They give you three. They're all really cool, guys. Um, all right, let's see where it's going to go and what it's going to be against. i got to do that because otherwise it might look bad, you know. I, I don't think it'll look bad, but it could. All right, so that's... Right now it's coffee dyed. I don't know if I'm going to keep that. If I do keep the coffee dyed, then they're all just going to be against coffee dyed. Which does make it a little easier, maybe. It's not that thick. I mean, if nothing else, it could just be a writing page. Let's just keep it. We'll keep it, and then I'll put them all against... I know what they're going against, so I don't have to worry about it. It makes life easier, right? Right. Okay. I'll just make life... Oh, don't put it back, because you need it. <laughs> I need it for size. Come back here. I need you for size. All right, so it doesn't matter what's on the other side then. So let's just pick something interesting. I mean, we could pick something with a brown just to kind of match. But I want to try to make sure it's gothic -y enough. I really love that rose. But you'd only see like a tiny little bit of it. That's the only thing. The purple's cool too. There's too many cool ones, guys. And I have to think about, you know, how small is it? You we're only gonna see, you know, this much. So with this, it would mostly just be the writing. Unless I added the flowers, but it could just mostly just be the writing, which is feasible for a good background. Let's do one with that, because I think that's feasible. I'll do one of those. What else? I've already got a green. I don't know which signature it's in, but one of them has a green. Must maybe. I want to look at see if there's a brown. I feel like there was something with more of a brown. And then I've also got that other one to look at, too. So. I don't know how I feel about that. On the cover, I thought I saw something that's kind of cool. It's not really creepy, but, you know, what you put on top of it's going to change all that. And then, of course, there's that black one, but I think I already have that, too. I don't see any browns. All right, well, we haven't used this. The gold is enough to play into the coffee dyed, I guess. Do y'all think this is gothic enough with just the, the roses? Yeah, let me know. I'll think about that. Let me look at the other one first. What's left in here? We have these huge books. I keep thinking I want to take these, though, and cover a, um, a like those file folder things. I don't know what you call them. Y'all know what I mean. I'm trying to see if I have one. I kind of have one, but it's not really the right type. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's, I don't know what they're called. These things. But you know how some have a long, straight back and they're, they're cardboard? I'm thinking that one of these would look really cool on that. If I could do that. Wouldn't that be cool? I think that would be cool. I'm not really into the houndstooth thing. They would make good belly bands. That's true, too. So we got blue. We got keys. I feel like I used the keys, did I? I think I did. And, of course, we just got normal coffee dye looking. These of our camera stuff. Green. Green's always good. And then we get that world thing, which we already used one of those. Did I use one of these? I'm thinking I did not. Did I? Maybe I did. Gosh, I don't know. Did I? I can't remember what I'm using. Let's see if I can see it real quick if I used it. 
Y'all probably remember better than me. My memory is not what it used to be. seeing it so maybe I haven't used one of those so I could use that you do like the dark floral okay I wasn't sure if it was appropriate or not so possibly this I'm just gonna tear a couple out <laughs> just so I can kind of compare and then there's just straight up brown that looks like a brown leather which is always good these I'm debating if I want to just cut out because I like to cut out the little pictures and use them places. I'll probably, I might even use one in my scene. I don't know. And then we have this bookshelf, which is a little smaller. I did this one. That could be cool too. I could even put little labels on them. <laughs> I could put creepier labels on them. That might be fun. If it would work. It might work. It might look awful. I don't know. And then there's that red. All right, that's it for that one. A lot more left in there than I thought I did. All right, so, and then this one. What was left in here? Get all these tarot cards. Mm, that's a little too bright, I think. I feel like I used the purple for sure. I didn't use this because I used this in my vignette. And I don't want to use it in case I mess something up and I need it. Although, I am thinking about changing my background in my vignette because I got that haunted house um, transfer um, from Essential Stencil and it looks really cool. I might use that instead. Those who are watching know what I'm talking about. This is kind of cool. What color is that? I think it's just kind of a gray, a blackish gray. Sometimes I can't tell when the light reflects. So, stars, because right now we have, here's what we have. We have books, we have floral, Oh, I didn't, I didn't rip out that floral. Okay, so I don't know if I want the stars. I like stars, but eh, we'll, we'll save it for something different. Where's all those florals? All right, let's do a floral. So we've got this one, which is mostly going to be the writing. And then either this or this. And a floral. Let's, where's that one floral I liked? It was near the front, right? I think it was near the front. Sorry if I'm, I don't know, I don't know if the flipping bothers y'all because sometimes it bothers me when I watch it. Where is it at? There it is. All right. So, let's pick three. What do y'all think? Books, writing, writing, this brown writing, black writing with gold, floral. I think y'all, Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Um, I think y'all like the floral. The, the darker one. So definitely this one, right? The books could be cool. I think the size is alright. All the dark ones and not this one. It's too light. Not grungy enough. I could always use it as a pocket or something or I could use it whenever I do a vintage journal of any kind honestly that will go with anything all right well, let's do these three so let's figure out where we're going to cut them are they on the grain no Ugh, really could I get away with doing it this way oh I could I'm going to do that this this is the grain see how fat that is so I definitely don't want to fold it this direction which is the way it is in the book 
I'm going to fold it this direction. And I think if I stick on this side, I'll be okay size-wise. All right, so I'll just try to remind myself in a second. Which way does this rain go? Okay, so this goes this way, which is fine. Yeah. All right, we'll do that that way. This one, oh, it's against the grain. Really? Really? Why? Why, why, why? I don't want to do this one sideways. I don't think it'll look good sideways. So we're going to do it on the grain, and I might reinforce it. Or I mean against the grain. I'll just reinforce it, because I really want the words to go this way. So it is what it is. Are they upside down? I can't even tell. It's that weird fakey writing. I think this is the right way. Yeah, I can see enough letters to tell. So we're going to do this little section. It is going to be against the grain, so I might reinforce it just to be sure. I do have one more piece of that fabric left. I don't know what that was from. It was from something last year. I couldn't find it in my fabric bin. All right, so let's cut these up. I'm just going to mark them because it's just going to make life easier. Where's my chalk pencil? Right, in here somewhere. There you are. All right, my little cheat sheet. So I'm just going to let just that tiny bit show. And just keep it very backgroundy. That's a word, right? Backgroundy? <laughs> not really. So this one does not have one of those little things I need to cut off. The others do. Well, no, this one doesn't. Just double checking. I think that was right. Yeah. Okay, so this way. So what looks good? matter. I think this is a little bit better. And I didn't know about the whole paper and grain things for a long time. I found out about that by watching is it something like four keys? She's a bookbinder. She does nothing but like bookbinding type stuff. But oh my gosh, her tutorials, guys, you got to watch her because she's really good and very knowledgeable, which is helpful. Because something as simple as that, if you don't know about grain and you're getting those cracks all the time, when you're even if you're scoring and you're like, why is it cracking? That's why. I don't think I have her written down. I'll look it up and find it and put a link on it. I don't think she's on here. Let me see. Because it's very specific. If you're not looking for that type of thing, then... Yeah, she's not on here. I'll have to find her. I want to say it's like four keys or something, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'll look it up and let you all know. All right, so there's two to cut. This last one. Okay. That's right, right? Yeah. I just I had to cut that little piece off. Okay, yeah. So I gotta cut that off. So I'm just gonna just go ahead and measure from this side. It's just the easiest way I know to do this. <laughs> Not take an hour measuring because I don't want to take forever. I might even still have the tape on there. I don't know. I probably do. I probably still have the tape on there. Oh, let's see. Yep, I do. Okay. So first we got to chop off that little piece. There. And then, let's see, where was it? Let me 
look at it. Uh, I see marks that aren't making sense. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I want to do this piece first because that'll be the longest waist piece. I try to do the largest waist piece as my first cut. That way you don't you, you waste less paper. So that would be my biggest drop in this piece. Go. Let go. Oh my gosh. You could even use these as covers, like little end covers on your books when you're making little minis. All right, that's good. Let's see where it is. Okay. This is not making sense. Oh, did something change? <laughs> Maybe I ended up cutting it smaller than I thought. This is from my book, right? I'm confused because my mark is way over there. Make sure I've got the right paper. That is a whole lot smaller. Is it because it's on the inside? I just want to make sure I'm not measuring wrong before it's too late. I bet it's because it's on the inside. That's what it is. Okay. All right. It's because it's on the, it's my inside piece, which means I'm losing you know that much of it so it's it is smaller than my mark so it's a good thing I didn't go that way because I would have been having to trim it even more okay and this is the center page so they were hanging out too much yeah I was just it's because and because of that and the fact that it's on the inside it's really a whole lot more not nearly as wide <laughs> I just thought I'd done something wrong. I was like freaking out for a minute there. <laughs> it's like, don't cut it wrong. They look so small. Okay. All right, one more. Uh, where's the mark? Uh, there it is. Of course, I was going to tear these edges. <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to tear these edges now. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't have to tear the edges, but I was going to. It's not a big deal. It does look cool, though. I'm pretty good at tearing them when they're tiny, but it's it's not easy. It's not super easy. All right, so I think this will look good this way. Luckily, these books are going all different directions, so it still worked out. Yeah. We're all on the grain now, right? Yes. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to be putting these with the outside because this is the side we're going to put that... Um, seen on and then we'll ink this side. I think I'll go ahead and fold it. It doesn't really matter. Should I just tear it first? I don't know. I'll just go ahead and fold it. I do kind of want to make sure my seams are the right size too. I think they are, but now I'm kind of second guessing myself. <laughs> oh my goodness, get it straight. Maybe dampen the edge. It might. You're right. It actually might help. 
especially since this is pretty thick. This this is this is hefty. What did I say? It was 160 GSM or something. It's definitely got some heft to it, but I, I'm not getting that crack, so that makes me happy. Even without scoring. All right. So these will be the insides. So we got to dye these or something. I don't know what we're going to do. We might just ink it a lot. Just something so they'll blend in. We're not going to decorate this yet because we're, we're not going to get that far. But I just want to make sure that these will fit. I think I sized them small enough, but I'm not 100% sure. Wow, the lighting is killing me today. Is it just... It's in my face or something. I can't see. It's like I cannot see the edge of that line. It's blending right into that blue. All right. So I'll make sure that they are going to match the centers and everything. That's the kind of tricky part when you do it. Not that it's a big deal because there are two scenes, but, you know. Uh, that looks pretty good. Half an inch. I think I think I'm good. All right. Let's see. So, top and bottom, I'm only going to have a tiny bit extra. Just a teeny bit. So that's fine. I knew I'd have like a half an inch on the sides. So I came over. You can kind of see there's like a black line there. You can kind of see it. So I think we'll be okay. All right. I think it'll be okay. I might lose a tiny bit of that lamp, but that's not a big deal. Okay. I'm okay with that. Let's see if I can tear it. Because I don't want to lose too much. Let's see how it fits in the, in the journal. Where are you, journal? I lost you already. There you are. Okay, so it's sticking out just a fraction, which is good because I'm going to tear those edges. So by the time I tear them, I think we will be... Well, it doesn't stick out if you really push it, but we'll still be fine. Okay, I just got to tear the tiniest little bit. And then we'll try to... I'll try to tear it, ink it, do whatever we're doing to this, and then I'll sew it off camera. I sew, I didn't sew it. Did I sew it with the picture on it? I think I did. I don't know. I'll look. Gosh, I don't remember what I did. It doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want this year, but I liked it, so I don't want to not do it that way. All right, so let's try to tear this. I'm going to try my tearing ruler first. See if I can get that thin of a line. I haven't sharpened it in a while. That might be bad. I haven't sharpened it in a while. I don't know how sharp it is. I try to sharpen this every now and then because it's a wood ruler, so the wood, needless to say, will get dull and it doesn't cut nearly as good. So every now and then I just kind of take my, this is, I think that's 120. 120 is probably about right. But I just kind of go along the edge of it. I'm not worried about changing anything, so. I'm just trying to thin it a little bit on the back. Let's see how it feels. up my mess in a minute. But I have a, if you don't know how to make these, I have a lesson on how to make them. Because I tell you what, I really like this tearing ruler. It works very well. Okay. Let's 
see if that's sharp enough. I found some new brushes, guys. I'm super excited. I'll show them to you. I don't buy brushes very often because I have so many. <laughs> I shouldn't be buying brushes. Um, but you know the new essential stencil brushes? These new, um, they're called, um, what are they calling these? Something. Oh my goodness. Starts with an S. Ah, got my brain. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, these new brushes that um, they have that set of, and they're, they're soft. I think they're white Taclon. I'm not sure what they are. What are they calling them? Do y'all know? I don't know. Anyway, I bought a set of these. Well, honestly, I think I got it as a free gift um, with my last purchase. But they're out of stock right now. So if you don't have them and you're looking for something, I mean, I don't want to send you away from me, yes, because I am an ambassador, but, but needless to say, if you can't find it or it's out of stock, I don't know how many it comes with. I feel like there's one more. One more. All my brushes are getting mixed together here. Come on. If there is, it's hiding very well. Anyway, so maybe there's only four. There may only be four. Okay, so there's that. I found this set on Amazon. And they are very similar. These are goat hair um, versus, I think, white Taclon. It doesn't say what these are, but I'm pretty sure they're white Taclon. These are goat hair. And they're just a tiny bit stiffer um, than this is when it's wet. It's hard to tell when they're dry, but when they're wet, it changes. But these are called dry brush. These are for dry brushing for miniatures and stuff. But they work really well. And price-wise, it costs the same. You get five versus four, but the price is about the same. Other than this one you'll get my discount on, this one you won't. So that's the difference. My discount, you get 10% off when you use my code when you buy these. So, But if these are out of stock for a long time and you really want something, I have these in my favorites now on my Amazon favorites. So you can look them up, see if you like them. But anyway, just something I kind of wanted to share because I was super excited when I saw them. And they work very nicely. For stenciling, for ink, painting, dry brushing, lots of things. Anyway, we might even use them today. Um, Tear. <laughs> I got off track, sorry. Alright, so I like to use my grid and think about how much I want to take off. Now, I'm going to try to take off an eighth of an inch sliver, which is challenging. I won't lie, it's challenging. So you line it up on your thingy. And you got to push really, really hard where you're tearing. Okay, that's the trick. Lots of pressure where you're tearing. And you just keep moving your finger down. Try not to lose it. And get that tiny little strip off of there. All right, so that's the trick. Make sure that your cutting ruler is sharp, obviously. You might have a metal one. I don't know. I don't have a metal one. I have a wood one. So I have to sharpen it every now and then. And then find your line. Okay. And lots of pressure. It came off a little bit there, but that's all right. I'll just tear it off. It'll look fine. All right. Teeny little bits there. I'm melting again, guys. I gotta turn this fan on. Sorry, excuse me. I don't know about y'all, but fall has not quite started here. <laughs> it was 94 degrees today. I was like, what? 
granted September does tend to be the hottest month but it was it was hot it was 94 I was like melting out there There was a hawk on my bird feeder today. So I'm sitting in my room and I go over to my window because I always look out my window. I'm just, I love looking outside. Um, so I go look out my window to see what's going on, if there's anything at the bird feeder or whatever. And there's a hawk. And I'm like, and he's literally sitting on top of my feeder. I'm like, dude, this is not a free buffet. <laughs> I didn't bother him or anything. I left him, but... Yeah, he's got to eat too, but I was like, don't eat my songbirds. <laughs> I like my songbirds. <laughs> I'm only going to do one of these with y'all, because if I do all of them, it's going to take us the whole lesson. Y'all don't want to sit here and watch me tear and ink. So we'll, I'll do one, and I'll do the rest um, in between, you know, my next life. But... <laughs> But he was just sitting there right on top of the the um, shepherd hook. Just the chillin'. I was like, hey. <laughs> he didn't stay long. He was only there a few minutes. But I have a video. It's it's on my normal, my my family page. So I didn't put it on my art room page because I don't like to put too much stuff like that on my regular business page. But I know some of you are on my friends list. So <laughs> it was just funny. I miss that little bitty piece there. Oh my. So I'm going to do one. I'll do one mostly completely and then we'll. I'll do the rest off of. <laughs> I can't get this one. I'll try to get a piece of this ruler that's sharper. We didn't lose too much. So now we got all this white area, which we obviously don't want. In our... Did you see it? Isn't that cool? I love nature too. And it's so funny too, because Dave and I were just talking about that very scenario yesterday. Because he, w there was some post and there was, I don't even remember what the critters were, but there were one, one critter, oh, it was a snake and a squirrel. And a snake was eating the squirrel. And then the squirrel came up and fights the snake and gets it off this baby squirrel because it's like a baby squirrel. But the comments were like, why didn't you step in and do something? And it's like, dude, <laughs> it's nature. You know, that's what nature does. And it's sometimes sad, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> but we were talking about it and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm just, it's nature, you know? The hawk's got to eat, too. <laughs> I don't necessarily want him eating all my birdies, but he does got to eat, too. All right, I'm going to do it this way. Let's see where I want to tear this one. I think I want to tear this one about the same except the sides because I didn't cut. This hasn't been cut yet on the sides. So, so the same on top and bottom about a little less if I can. I'm going to try. Um, and then these I'll go so I want this to be outside just a little bit so I'll try to go there I can't even see that line I know I know y'all can't see it either <laughs> like, but I don't know where that line was it's a circle of life right it's just that's how it goes something eating something But I would have been very sad if he had caught one of my songbirds. <laughs> but I do love hawks. I love hawks so much. I was just like, no, nah, he's got to eat too. I'm not going to bother him. Let him do his thing. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to think if I tear it on this side, because you get that edge. Which side was I tearing on a while ago? I feel like I was tearing on that side. I wasn't, I can't remember now. So maybe I have to tear on this side. 
I'm just going to do a little test and see which side it is because I don't remember. All right, so the top side is the one that's going to get the torn part. And I want, I want the torn part on this because I, I want that look. All right, so let me remark that with my chalk pencil then. All right, I'm just going to fold this so I can mark it easier. So I got to think about, I don't want to lose my little lantern there. So that's going to be, well, the top and bottom is about the same. And then everything else I think will be okay. Actually, I'm not going to even lose too much of that lamp, so that's good. All right, so we'll do about here. doesn't have to be exact, but close. I just want it to overlap as much as I can. The bottom I know is I'm going to have issues. Um, I could pull this in a little more, I guess. Oh, this goes on the inside of that. Oh, I'm thinking backwards, guys. I'm totally thinking backwards. Scratch all that. This has to be smaller. Never mind. Well, <laughs> don't pay attention to what I say. Pay attention to what I do, hopefully. All right, we got to make it smaller. I forgot. It's going on the inside of this. So, that means I might lose a little bit, but not too much. All right, so we want to go about here. About here. Yeah, we're going to lose a little bit of the lamp, unless I come over that way. Nah, we'll lose a little bit of the lamp. Otherwise, it'll mess up my center, so that's fine. We'll just lose some of the lamp. It is fine. I forgot this was actually inside this piece. And the edges will be fine. I'll just, I can chop off as much as I want, really. All right, let's try it. See what happens. See how it looks. I'm going to lose a little bit of that lamp. As long as I get like half of it, I'd be happy. I'll try to get half. Let's see how that goes. I gotta put this on a grid because I, I can't tell if I'm straight. Probably not. We'll do one and see if I messed it up, and if not, we can go into the next one. Well, you guys won't see me go into the next one, but I will show you after. Because this does take a little bit of time. Oops, dropped it. Didn't push hard enough. This part. Let's see. I know I need to chop more off, so. Uh, looks like I need to go about there. I'm just giving myself a tiny border. And about there. Because I like the way that will look. You have 15 feeders out? Holy cow! Deborah, how on earth do you afford to feed 15 feeders worth of parts? <laughs> that would be a small fortune. I get mad having to spend the $30 to feed mine. <laughs> oh my goodness. I cannot even imagine. <laughs> it's a lot of bird seed. Let's see what all she said. She has 15 feeders out. You love hawks too. They can go get all the flipping filled mice and voles they want. Exactly. Not my songbirds. That's kind of how I felt. We got plenty of mice out there, I'm sure. <laughs> Eat the mice. We don't need them. 
know. I'm sure they do some good, but I don't want them. Of course, they're probably out there eating all my bunnies, you know. I just had those baby bunnies. All right, that's good. That's a good size. So really, I only have to worry about this part for inking. I have to ink that entire background, um, so that won't be as difficult. Okay. So I think I'm just gonna do some, just some blacks and browns and make it. We'll keep it simple. Um. Let's use and let's use. Um. Trey's black, maybe. Let me see how dark is that. It's pretty dark. Some of these are darker than others, and like I said, I did it on draft, so they are definitely not pure black. Um, I've got, what is this? This is black soot, lost shadow, maybe. Uh, it might be too light. It's probably too light. We'll do black soot, though. And then maybe just, um, a vintage or something. We'll see. I don't really have to do that many colors. Um, so I could probably get away with just doing the black. But I didn't. I didn't want it too dark. We'll go with scorch timber first and see how that looks because that's not as dark. I think I'll use a dauber because it's going to go on heavier. Do I have a dauber for my oxide? Where'd it go? I want to stick my ink and my oxide together because it'll mess it up. Try not to mess them up. All right, so we're just going to ink up this edge. So this is the scorched timber, which is very dark. It's a very dark brownish black. It's a great color. chances of this looking solid is slim to none so um, otherwise I could go in and spritz it with water if I really wanted to but I don't think it's going to be an issue because you know the sponge itself will make variations in the color Yeah, this is one of my favorite pages I did, honestly. I'm going to do both sides. So I got this color on the other side, too. I might do black. Let me see how this looks. That looks like that. Let's see what the black looks like on this side. Yeah, we're going to do the, the black soot on this side because it's mostly black paper. I got that little white edge there. I, I could leave the white edge, but we're keeping it grungy, so let's keep it grungy. This is just a cereal box that I'm using, guys. I'm sorry I'm shaking so much. Am I out of focus? Y'all yell at me if it goes out of focus because it is shaking so much. It's probably going to try to go out of focus. I'll try not to wiggle so much. These little fold-up tables are not, not the sturdiest. It depends if my, sometimes my legs get pushed out or in or something and then it shakes even more. You know what I mean? Go a little slower. <laughs> it's making me go out of focus, I think. All right, there. That's good. So we got that side and that side. Let's see how much more we need. We got to do this. So this we only need to worry about this side. There's a lot of browns in there. I think I'll go with the um, scorched timber. 
Uh, this one has more blacks, this one has more browns, but that's all right. For this one, I'll probably just go like this. So I'm really just trying to get that white edge on this one. I do like the Scorch Timber, though. It's just that darkness I needed. As I was trying to use the walnut, that was the darkest one I had, and sometimes it just was not dark enough. There. Okay. And then let's see if that fits. are good and if I see anything that is just too light maybe you can add just a little bit more I'll probably should put it. I don't really want to color my table I have ink everywhere just play with anything that looks like it doesn't blend well all right so that's that and then I'm going to sew it, but I'm also going to glue it. It's going to have some glue. I'm not just going to sew it and hope that it matches up in the right spot because that will never happen. <laughs> it just won't. And you know how it is when you do pages like that that are together in the middle. They get a little temperamental, so I'm hoping I don't have any issues. I'm going to put glue on this. The type of glue, hmm, I think I'm just going to use glue sticks since I am going to sew it. It should be safe. And then, let's see what else we want to talk about. Um, I have a really cute idea for this Sunday's, I'm going to get ink on this for sure. For this Sunday's um, Stencil Sunday project, I'm going to do the transfers. I don't know if you all got the Halloween transfers, but they're really cute. Um, mine came in, so I'm trying to get my light. I got to change it so I can see the reflection. If you keep your light angled so you can see your reflection, you can tell where you have glue and where you don't have glue. Hopefully I can get the glue on this whole thing before it dries. <laughs> that is the trick. We shall see. I'm putting a lot because I want to make sure it sticks. And I'm not going to sew it immediately. If I was going to sew it immediately, I would probably avoid my edges. Um, but I'm going to let it dry thoroughly before I sew it. So it's not going to gum up my sewing machine. If there's a direction, make sure you're the right direction. Let's see. If I like one better than the other, they're very similar. We'll just go this way. And then I'm going to attempt to get this centered. <laughs> attempt. I think if I start like that and then get the glue off my fingers. Terrible. It's a tiny bit crooked, but that's okay. I can live with that. Make sure that's down. Now, I would love to fold this right now, but I can't because if it's wet, when I try to fold that, I'm going to end up with weird buckles there. So I'm going to let that dry. Um, when it's completely dry, then I will probably score it and fold it just to just to make sure that I don't get those weird 
I don't know what it does. It, it bunches up. It looks weird. So just let it dry. Once it's completely dry, I'll, I might sew around it first. I might fold it first. I don't know that it matters. And then that will be ready for our sink, for our center. Um, and I'll do all the other, the other two just like this. Okay. So they'll all be done the same way. And those will be ready to insert on the next live. So let's see, what else do we have to do today? It's 10, 10. I'm not going to sit here and just do this same thing because that's, it's boring. We're not, we're not going to torture y'all. All right, let's see. What can I do? I might just start, see if there's a page or something I can decorate. Okay. I haven't looked in my ephemera a whole lot. Mm. Could possibly do that. By the way, I ended up chopping that off. <laughs> I told y'all not to chop it off. As I, I, it was just a little too long and I was like, I need to cut it some more and I cut it and chopped it right off. So that's okay, I just glued it. But I did chop it off. I was just like, ah, you did, to you totally did what you told them not to do. I do need to do these vellum. It is just an inking thing, but this one honestly feels like it's not far enough out. Oh, it's, I bet it's because I changed the page. That's what it is. Because I changed the page, it's sticking out now. I don't think it'll be a big deal. I'm going to let it stick out. I might sew around it. I haven't decided. Yeah, it must have been on a inside page. You know what? I could... No, because that green, that green's not going to change no matter where I put it. It'll still be the same. That's okay. I don't think it's going to be too big. Too bad. It's, if the vellum sticks out a little past the rest of the things, what happens is it starts just getting bent up. Um, so I prefer it doesn't stick out any. I may just, I'm just going to go ahead and trim it just a little bit. This one, I don't, did I use my ruler? I might have. Did I? I don't know. Vellum is tricky to tear too. But I'm going to have to trim this just a little bit more because otherwise I have a feeling it's going to just start getting bent up on, on the pages when you turn them. And I don't like that. Let's see if I can do it. Vellum is this vellum particularly because it's, I can't figure out what to do with it. It's heavy. It's a heavyweight vellum. It's going to fight me. If I had fingernails, it wouldn't be so hard, but it, I don't. And that's not going to change. I've been biting them too long. Ah, come on. Nope. Try to just tear it. Super thick vellum, though. So thick. It's a little bit better. I don't care what it looks like as long as it doesn't go past my cardstock. I just can't go past that. But this prints up very nicely. I do print it on draft because the ink needs to go through the printer quickly or it'll smear. It's more likely to smear. So I do print it on draft. Let's have a direction. I know there's a direction here. Can I tell what it is? <laughs> I cannot. I think it's that. Alright, is that better? Yeah. Okay. 
all better. Are all the others inside? I think they are. If I find it, there it is. Yep, that's inside. Is this one inside? Close enough. Just a teeny little bit sticking out, but I think that's okay. All right, so these can be inked. I would suggest using a archival though. Because otherwise it'll smear. Stays on works real well on vellum. I have a couple of stays on. But you can also just use the Distress Archival. I don't know that one's better than the other, really, I guess, but they're similar. I'm debating if I want to use Hickory Smoke or Black Soot. Hmm. Hmm. I only have a really dark black in the stays on, so we're going to try this one. Hickory Smoke. Let's see what that looks like. dark enough. It's actually not bad. So that's what the hickory smoke looks like. Which is not bad. This will probably rip my little dauber all up because it's very, very sharp. Um, the vellum is you know, it's a thick vellum, so it's it's definitely going to be a little bit hard on my dauber. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of them, but just keep that in mind. <laughs> you might want to just use a makeup sponge or something if you don't want to destroy your dauber. Super dark, which is kind of nice because this is transparent. So I think that'll be good. I'll ink all the, maybe I'll ink all the others off camera. I'll just do one so you can see what I'm going to do. And I'm going to try to do that and just do one. Maybe I'll work on the signature pages or something in the other journal. I don't know that I am, I haven't printed out any ephemera yet, so unless I have something easy to cut out. Right, you can do this middle if you want, but chances are it won't even show. This is going to be sewn in. Alright, so archival ink, some sort. Ink your edges on your vellum so they look finished. Okay. I'll do all the others later. Let's see. There's my lid. There it is. Um, how's that drying? Mm, feels fairly dry, but I don't know if I want to risk it. Try to see if I can find some pages. Do you want me to do that? Or you want me to try to find something to decorate? I could try to make a tag or something. Or a pocket. It probably wouldn't be anything fancy. I'm trying to see what I have. I have this paper that got washed. <laughs> Literally. So I had these. Um, it was a notepad. And they were in a drawer in the kitchen. I don't know why. Probably is because I was doing grocery notes on them or something. And the hubby flooded the kitchen. <laughs> I'm trying to see where I stuck them. 
here somewhere. Uh, nope. Okay. Anyway, they were white and black, you know. They, they were normal looking. <laughs> and he flooded the kitchen, and they were all just in a mess. So I coffee dyed all of them. I think I tea dyed them. Just because I wasn't going to throw them away. I've put them under books, but they are not flattening out. They definitely do not want to completely flatten. But I was like, it's okay. But now they're grungy looking. They'll still work. So, definitely put this somewhere. Maybe as a, a flip out or something. That could be cute. Let's see. What do we got? Maybe not there. Hmm. I'm thinking I could do like a fabric flip, maybe. I just put some bats on there. That's the Tim Holtz stencil. I know Essential Stencil has a bat stencil too that's kind of similar, so y'all might have that one. thinking if there's anywhere I could put this and like do a, a little flip out kind of thingy. Some sort of a fold out or something. Just not sure if I want it to I kind of want it to maybe I bring the notes down. I don't have to use the whole thing. Maybe make it shorter. Put this over the top. Possibly over the top of whatever fabric. If I want to do a fabric flip. Let's see. Hmm. What do I have? Everything's buried. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Got spider web, me cloth. Lots of mummy cloth. Maybe. brown one. I don't want to use that because it's on the cover, isn't it? Did I do the cover with this? Yeah. No. Yes? No. No. I did that on the black and white one. So I didn't do the out on the cover. What did I do on my black and white one? Okay, it is that. So I'm not going to use this on the inside then. There's writing on here. Just debating on which section looks good. I kind of like the writing section and the bats. So maybe there. Because that'll go along with this. So this has got like blood of bat and eye of newt and black cat's hiss. So I think I'll do it here. I'm 
do a little flip. Where's my fold? edges. Weird. I don't know if I can tear that small. We'll find out. Nope. I cannot. Okay. Well, I didn't want to get rid of that bat, but maybe I'll have to. Just because I could either leave it really crooked or tear it. I don't think I can tear it. I'm going to try to tear it. I didn't want to lose that big bat. <laughs> I wanted my edge straight. Okay. There's lots of bats. And then about it's like a weird shadow. It was like so I think some of these. I might ink them even more. Maybe. So I think I want it to this paper I might even ink more because it's not so dark enough I don't think. So we'll do that. Then you can see that. Good note spot. And then I think I'll tear this. Maybe about right here. So if I want to tear that edge off or not. I kind of like the way it looks, so I think I'll leave it. I might can just make it look grungy or something. I don't know. I'll figure that out. All right. This is page is driving me nuts. Have a couple more of these. Not too many. Like maybe. Let us do three. That's plenty. Stay. I'm not going to glue this down, so it, the bats will still be there. And this I'm going to put on top somehow. And my, I want to grunge this up just a little bit darker, I think. I don't know if I want to use this. I don't think I do. I think one's enough. I'll probably use this somewhere at some point. I think I want the solid one. Although, you know, I'll use a little bit of it. I'll make use a little bit on the top. Just to kind of make it a little different. I'll use a tiny little bit where the notes is going. So, I'm going to cut this. this. This I can't tear. So, think about here and here. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
perfect. So this actually has, I think black soot on it, or hickory smoke on it. I think what I did, looking at it, sometimes I don't remember guys, but I'm pretty sure I just took this and went like this. Okay. I am 90% sure that's what I did. Cause it's real scratchy looking. So I think that's what they did. So let's use the black soot. That's hickory. Let's do this. So I've got to get a little more black in there just to kind of go with That material. My bats are actually brown. Maybe I'll go back in and do them black. I think it might make more sense. I don't think this was a center page, right? No, it shouldn't be a center page. So we're just going to try to stay on this one side. And I'll do this black because I think they need to be black. So let me find that stencil. There it is. So this is this one. Did I have it on the right direction or not? <laughs> Probably not. It looks like I had it on backwards. Totally had it on backwards. No? Yes? No? No? I had it on. All right. I just got to figure out where it was then. Uh, line them up somewhere. Oh, I'm finding it. There it is. So I'm just going to reline this up as best I can. If it's not perfect, it's not a huge deal because it'll just look like a shadow. But we need these guys darker. They'll only be seen if somebody actually flips all the way underneath. But you never know. Might have some hidden journaling in there. I know that, like I said, there is a ES stencil with bats on it that are very similar to this one. Not sure about the size comparison, but I think it's similar. I didn't pull it out to look. Could have. Okay. There. Now it's nice and dark. It'll match better with what we have. Okay, let's fray this up appropriately. Try to get it kind of straight. this underneath just to give it some just an interesting texture and I wanted to ink these just a little bit I don't think I'm going to tear them or anything I think I'll just ink them and stick with the archival or I could switch over to distress ink 
doesn't really matter. I'll just stick with this because I already have it out. Pretty grungy with this. Since I can't tear it, I'll give it a little extra. This paper is fairly thin. I don't even know if you'll see this top edge. So, but just doing something like that. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but it does make a difference in how it looks. black fingers. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. I was doing all those little jars, all my little tiny potion jars yesterday, and I had my fingers were all kinds of colors. <laughs> and all the alcohol inks and stuff. Oops. I don't have anybody on tonight. Oh, I've gone. Everybody abandoned me. What is today? I don't know what today is. Is it Friday? I think it's Friday. I don't know. Is it Wednesday? <laughs> I honestly do not know. I'm sitting here thinking, and I really couldn't even tell you if it's Wednesday or Friday. I think it's Friday. My days are so messed up because Dave's been working all kinds of weird hours because he had to go back to doing crew work. And crew work, when you're doing that and rigging shows, it's all kinds of hours. It might be early morning one day. It might be, you just never know. So you get really, and there's no such thing as weekends, you know. There, that's nice and grungy looking. debating. Normally I'd probably sew it, at least this part, not this, because sewing this is a nightmare. Um, I do have staples, I, if it's working right. I could glue it, but you know, I don't always have to glue. Let's see if I can staple this. Like I said, it's not been working right. I have no idea what's up with it. It's got staples. Uh, maybe it's bent in half. I'm trying to feed two of them in there or something. Figure out how this goes in. That? No, like that. I think. Yeah. All right, let's try it again. Let's see if I can get it to work. It's like a similar to a tiny attacher. I don't know where I got it. I saw it at some store. I was like, well, maybe that would work, but it's, it really doesn't work very well. <laughs> nope. All it's doing is just trying to snag. All right, I give up. We'll glue it. <laughs> it's too temperamental. It's fine. I'll glue it.
just a little writing space. Pretty simple. These are easy to do. Nothing new. But since I didn't have a plan, we're keeping it simple. Art glitter will hold fabric. This holy fabric is going to be a little more challenging, but we're going to put a label over it, so it should be fine because I'm just going to mostly kind of stick it over there, hopefully not go through that bottom layer. I should have put some acetate or something, but I think I'm all right. I don't want to go through that. Let me grab some acetate just till it dries. And then I'll throw this over the top of that. I think I'm just going to tear it out. I don't know if I can get that little shape though. Maybe. Don't have to have it, but since it's there, might as well try. try to not glue through everything. I really only want it to glue through the the materials, not the paper on the bottom. So I'll let it dry before I remove that acetate. through the holes just fine. So I've got the acetate here so although it's it's not going through so it might be fine but I'll leave it there nonetheless. I gotta clean this glue off my fingers. Okay. Have y'all use that crafter's pick the ultimate glue? If any of you? I don't know how many people I have on right now. Three people? Um, I had never used it, and the bottle was like, you know, it sounded a lot like the art glitter, but it's a whole lot cheaper. <laughs> Doesn't have the little fancy nozzle, but it's this one, Crafter's Pick Ultimate, the only non-toxic water-based super glue, which really isn't true nowadays. Um adheres to metal, plastics, glass, and more, dries clear. So it's clear, flexible, pretty much says it glues everything, which is surprising. Um, protect from freezing, it's water-based. But it is, it does glue, it's very similar to the art glitter. Um, it's very thick though, um, compared. So maybe good for things that need more thickness. I did water a little bit down and put it into a little teeny tiny thingy, so in case I need it thinned out, so I just added some water to that and put some in there, which seems fine. Um, but it's not bad. It was five forty nine at Hobby Lobby for eight ounces, comparing to Art Glitter, which granted my Art Glitter lasts me forever, guys, but I think that's because it has that small nozzle. An eight ounce bottle of this would be like 20, I'm thinking, around 20 bucks. I usually don't buy an eight ounce, that's a four ounce, so, but I like the size of that. 
it doesn't hurt my hand. The bad part, this bottle is hard to squeeze. It's just like that Fabrifix bottle, and you can't squeeze it. <laughs> if you have tendonitis, you can't squeeze it, or arthritis, or anything. Um, but it's a good glue. The glue itself seems nice. I like the glue. But I might put it in like a Sugar Bell bottle or something because it's it is definitely hard to squeeze. But I've been testing it out on things and it seems to work well. I put it on some acetate, and compared it to Art Glitter, and and they're basically the same. Both of them will rip the paper up before they come off of that. So both hold identically. They look about the same, but. For the cost, if you if you have a lot of stuff that you're gluing and you just need one that's a little cheaper, I would say try that out because it seems like a good deal, at least in my opinion. Anyway, I just want to put that out there. I like to share when I find things that I don't know about because I don't know everything. <laughs> I don't know all the things that are out there. But anyway, there's that page. That looks cute, right? This gets cleaned up with alcohol. Just use a little alcohol swab on it because I used the archival ink. And I think we're done. Something's not in the right spot. Archival hickory. Archival black Something's not right. Scorch timber. Goes in here. The scorch timber. And then black soot goes somewhere. I don't know where the box is. Alright. Let me find the journal. I'll stick that back in there. So we got a little bit done. And I'll do all that other stuff um, before I come back. So let's see, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, and there, right? I'm going to turn this so it's sideways. I, I think it's fine, but I'm going to leave it just for a little bit. But that'll flip up like that. So a little writing spot, and then the bottom will have the, the bat tied in there. It's cute, right? I always like Fabrifix. I probably shouldn't float that down either. Because <laughs> it's, it's a little cold still, so I know it's still wet. So we'll, we'll leave that open for a a few more minutes let it dry some more but that is it guys hopefully y'all enjoyed and like I said I'll do all those things that I didn't finish I'll, you know the second and the third and then I'll put some pages in that um, the black and white journal <laughs> Care, like, regions beyond this journal so I'll put the pages in here I just got to go through and try to figure out how I'm going to get enough black and white pages to do it. But I'm determined to make this black and white. <laughs> I'm determined. And then Sunday I will be on for um, Normal Stencil Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm going to be playing with transfers. I'm going to be playing with the new transfers that I got in this set I think yes this set so I'll do that on Sunday um y'all come join me I got something real cute I think you'll like it all right y'all have a wonderful rest of your evening thank you Angela and y'all have a good night talk to you next time bye bye Move that, and now it's out of focus. Here, let's throw that.